Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about LibreOffice lists. We're going to do some formatting, some styling, and some other considerations. Welcome back, I'm Tom Morosky. I'm an author and a technology consultant, and on this channel we will teach you how to do all your various typesettings, ebook creations, audiobook creations, and how to get those books and distribute them out to all of the various places where you run your book distribution. So today we're going to have another tutorial on LibreOffice, and we want to look at lists. So of course lists, these are ordered lists, unordered lists, bullet point lists, all these types of things. There's a lot of styling in there and it can be a little bit more confusing. That's why I wanted to focus on a separate video just on your lists. But what we can do is style your bullet points, determine how far the bullet points are in from the margins, how far the text is from the bullet points, and then how you can actually use those list items for character styles when you are doing the rest of your styling out. So. It's an excellent option to look at how you can custom format different lists. I've used these in the past when asking uh, questions, summary questions, or chapter summaries at the end of chapters. I'll oftentimes use for, uh, formatted and styled lists in there. So with that though, let's go ahead and jump on over to the computer and have a look at what LibreOffice can do with your list styles. So here we are on the computer, and uh, what we're going to be looking at here is how you can control and work with your lists. And so with this, what I kind of want to do is kind of work with how you can get your lists formatted, the various things, the style overrides, and then actually setting and defining some lists. So of course, the quickest way to add a list is just to grab it on your list up here. Now these are going to behave as overrides. So if you don't want to have to fight with what your listing is going to be working with or looking like from inside of here, if you want more granular control, then you definitely want to use the list styles instead. We're going to start by just making this a list, and then we're going to tab in this little list A, little list B, to kind of show you how the, uh, how the listings there are going to work. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to have a little bit of extra text over here so that what we can do is I want to see how text looks when you wrap around because that's going to be important for what we do. So let's just go ahead and add some more text. So we'll say this text, if I can write today, this text is supplied to give us a long enough line to wrap the text onto a new line to show you how margins and indents work. All right, so now we have one list that has a lot more information on it. Uh, you can see how everything is pretty much lined up by default. Now, what we have is rather than just going down here and selecting the list type here, which is something I could do, uh, and I can actually, I believe, set each one of them independently. But again, that kind of behaves like a style override. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to use the list styles. Now, this is a part of the page styles that we have not actually worked with before. Of course, we have our paragraph, our character, our uh, page styles. We haven't looked at frames or tables either. But what we're going to do here is inside of this, you can see that you have a variety of preset list designs already created. And so what we're going to do here is I want to work within some of these constraints of these guys and show you how you can make these list items work. Now, of course, these ones up here are your bulleted lists. These ones are your numbered lists. So you can kind of see how these guys look. But sometimes you want to have more fine control over how the lists work. And so understanding these style overrides is going to be the best thing that you can do. So let's just go ahead and start with our list one. We'll just go ahead and modify this. I can create a new one. I'm just going to go ahead and modify it. So inside of here, we have our organizer, which gives us our name. Now we have bullets, numbering, and outline. These are three separate areas that you can't do. You can't just do this one and then maybe apply one of these and then maybe apply something like this. You have to pick either one of these guys to work with. 
So we're just going to go ahead and start with this one here, and I'll use these nice 3D arrow bullets. Um, and then what we're going to do is inside of, uh, now the image tab will allow you to add uh, your own image. If you want to use your own custom bullet, you can go ahead and add that over there. Now the two areas we're going to be in is looking at our customize and our position. So our position is, what we're going to see here is this is going to tell us where the alignment starts. This is where the bullet is from the page margin. It's going to tell us the tab stop, which is where the list item is from the bullet. And the indent at will tell you where the wraparound text starts. Now, if you hit this default, it'll always reset it back to wherever the system default is. So you can even see that the lists predefined don't even use the default. So I'll go ahead and apply that and see what this looks like. Now, this is applied just to level one. You can see that level two kind of stayed out there. So I'm going to want to come over here to level two, default that one as well. So we hit the default. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the adjustments. Now, what you're going to see here is the easiest one to work with is the indent at. So we'll look on the bottom line. The indent at shows you where the text on particularly a wraparound line is going to show up. So if I set this guy to zero, it's going to shoot all the way back. If I set the guy to one, it's going to go up to the one inch line, which is right up here. You can see where the, the ruler is there. Here's our one inch. Here's our two inch. So we set it at one inch. And so you can see that the text lines up to the one inch mark. All right, so let's go back and modify it. Now, what we're going to be looking at here is adjusting your tab stops versus your alignments. Now you can do your numbering following nothing, tab stop and space. So you'll see here that if you do nothing, then you don't have any indicator of your tab space. That's actually going to uh, move around your list a little bit more. So that's pretty much going to bring your list right on into your bullet point each time. So you may not want to do anything like that. Now we have a space option as well, which is just going to give you a little bit of a space option. And it's not something that you can actually control how far out your, your item is. So if I, no matter where I put it at, you'll just kind of see that it's basically a space ish away from the list item. So if you always want your list items to follow just that spacing, then you can do that. Now, if you want more granular control, then use your tab stop. Now, what this is going to do is, again, keeping an eye on where your tabs are. If your bullet gets too close to the tab, it's going to shoot your list item out the next tab. So we have a tab space about 0.5. Let me go ahead and align this guy back to zero. You can see that it pushes the tab space out to a 0.5. If I pull this bullet in, let's just say bridge half the gap there. So I'll do like a 0.25. You can see that it moves this guy in. It's about a space out. This uh, The list item here moves out just to the nearest tab out, so 0.5 out. If I start encroaching in on that, though, it'll get to the point where it's going to push the tab out. Now, this guy here is still aligned at 0.36, and uh, you can see it's just kind of encroaching into this spot. So if I move this up any further, it will push out the line to the next tab stop. So now we're at 0.4, so just about to the halfway. Since the bullet has been encroaching on the space, it pushes it out, in this case now, to the one-inch mark. So this is how you can kind of determine what's going to go on. So if I do the 0.5, and I can go all the way up till probably somewhere around 0.8 to 0.9, and the tab's going to get closer and closer. When I get a little bit too close, again, it's just going to push the tab back out. So let's go try 95, and it pushes the tab back out. Okay, so there is our adjustment. So let's go. Let's just do. Uh, let's do a 0.5. See what that one looks like. All right, so there we have a 0.5. So we have our tab stop at 0.5, and now our indent is at one because our arrow pushed out to about half an inch out that pushed our tab stop out 
at the next one half inch, which is one, and then now our indent is at one. So now we have our wrapping alignment is controlled by the indent. If I did 0.5 here on this, you'll see that now the text will align itself with the bullet instead. Now the numbering alignment, this is kind of where it is in space. So we have a centered and we have a right. You can kind of see how that pushes it around a little bit. So if you see where we're at 0.5, so this is, is the bullet aligned with the first part of the 0.5 or is it aligned at the last point or right in the middle? So that will help you determine what and how you want that, uh, that guy to go. Whoa, 10 inches is too much. There we are. All right, so there you can have the ability to control your list. Now, of course, you can see here that our list B didn't align with any of those. And uh, that's simply because our point B list is controlled separately. So I have to go down to, uh, I'm going to have to go down to there. Let's do uh, 1.25 and let's just try that as a, as a tab list. So let's pull this back down a little bit. I don't think 0.5 is going to help me, but let's roll this down to like uh, 0.6. We're just going to try and find a nice happy medium here to pull those guys in. So it looks like even the uh, 0.25 is still out there. Let's go down. We definitely want it more than one. So let's go 0.75. And it looks like just the way that the listing is going, it looks like since it's going out to the next 0.25, um, I'm probably not going to be pull it in much more. Let's try that, though. Yeah, it's not going to let me pull that in anymore. So there is about what we're going to see with your lists. And then if you want to see some wraparound text, then uh, let's just go ahead and copy our wraparound text and see how that works with the next one. So that one's pretty well consistent. So now we have our list spaced out exactly the way that we want. Now, if you go into the customize, you can actually set each one of these independently. So here we have our list style one. We can select the specific character that we want. So I can do something like this for just the list ones. You can go ahead and select any of the ASCII characters on any fonts that you happen to have. So you have a lot more control over what your list is going to look like. So you can just kind of find the various things that you might want to use. All right. And you can do um, the same thing for this level down here. Right now we're using the th uh, this arrow. Let's just go with this one here. So there we have a bullet point list out fully customized. So that is how we can style list one. Of course, if I just grab my whole list, I can use any other list style there, or I can just go right on back to the custom one that we created. All right, now that we have that created, you can actually apply this to a style. So um, this list contents here doesn't have anything. So let's go ahead and create a new list. So um, List one one. Let's go with a list one two, list one three, and list one four. Let's go ahead and go with a list A A and a list B uh, B B B B. Not G G. There we go. So now, if I were to come over here, rather than having to come up here, I can actually come into my list contents. I'm going to modify this guy here, and then under your um, uh, under your outlines and numbering, you can come down here and select a predefined list. So if I click OK, now what we see is anytime I select list contents, it's automatically going to pull up the format for our custom list style. So I can create my own custom list based on a uh, paragraph tag rather than anything else. This is going to allow me to do other things in here, such as maybe I want to change my font. So let's see. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab our, uh, do a change of font of our list style. This guy should, oh, I think I changed that as something else. Let's go ahead and change this to 
text body. All right, so now we have a text body. This one's just borrowing from our list style, but now this list is actually borrowing from list contents, which uses all of the listing styles out of our original list, but I can do anything else that I can do inside of a paragraph tag, uh, setting that over here. So let's go with list italics. So now I can actually define a paragraph tag utilizing a custom list style so I can do more than just the list styles. This is going to give you a much faster way to organize lists, particularly if you're doing things like uh, study questions at the end of a at the end of a book or summarizing points or anything else that you might need to do. So there is information on running with all of your lists and then applying them into character styles. So thanks for coming along on this video. Subscribe. Let me know what you've learned in this guy here and how it has helped you in your individual writing. And as always, I hope that we have taught you how to get your writing done right.